last night, I was getting ready for bed around midnight, and I got a call from the police saying that a wild fox had been hit by a car running across the road, and it wandered onto my property, and it was injured, and they were going to send animal control over. So I said, all right, wait 20, 30 minutes. Police show up, animal control. They go around the property with a flashlight. I come out. You know, there are a lot of these animals are rabid. And I see this poor little thin baby fox about the size of my poodle, scared to death in a cage. They had found it. And I asked the animal control officer about it. She said, well, his hind legs don't work anymore. And we're going to take it in and we're going to look at it, but we're probably going to euthanize it. I mean, it looked like a pet, you know, gorgeous animal, big eyes, elegant creature. I said, well, why do you have to euthanize it? She said, well, because most wild foxes are rabid around here. I didn't say anything because it's really not my call. It's their call. And I went back to my house and I listened to the mother fox crying all night. She was barking and crying for her cub crying for her baby that had been taken away in the van by the animal control officer. I heard the mother calling for hours and hours. Apparently, they both ran across the road, but the baby was not as swift as the mother. The baby got hit on the hind. The mother made it into the bushes, and apparently the baby limped along with broken hips or a broken back and lay there in the bushes till they found it. But I got to tell you something. As that mother cried for her baby cub, something in me understood the call of the wild. And I felt more sympathy for that dead fox. I felt more sympathy for the death of one rabid fox than for the death of Michael Jackson. Play some music, please. It's the Savage Nation. Anyone want to comment on the fox story? Because as I said to you, I'm not moved by Michael Jackson's death. When I heard he died, I said, big deal. Who cares? I never listened to a Michael Jackson song in my life. I have never watched an entire uh, television show at night with that buck tooth fraud who uh, ridiculed Sarah Palin's daughter, David Letterman. I've seen it in passing. I know he's on TV. I think he's a talentless clown. I know that when his writers were on strike, he couldn't perform. So I figure he's nothing. But apparently there's a lot of Americans who like David Letterman even though he's a talentless hack, and he, he himself said it, that all he does is uh, pass bad jokes every night. And I think this guy was a mildly talented singer and dancer. I don't understand how you can see it otherwise. In other words, this is part of America's insanity. Insanity is the, is the uh, inability to order things, O-R-D-E-R. -E in order for a society to survive, there must be order in the society. When a society becomes disordered, Anything can and anything might happen. And so people start to think, wow, he's great. You have to say, well, slow down, children. He's great compared to who? He's great compared to what? He's great compared for why? And once you start to analyze who the man was, what he did, who he really was, he's just a musician who sold a lot of records, basically to people with low intelligence around the world who liked his music. But it's not a great man you're talking about. It's not the man who invented the neutron bomb. It's not the man who found the cure for polio, is it? I mean, what are you talking about? So when you, when you lack order, when you can't sort through the relativity of an individual's achievements, and you start to think that because a man sold records and he jumped around with a white glove, that he's better than Jonas Salk, and he's better than John Coltrane, and he's better than George Washington, he's better than General Patton, then you are a man who... Uh, is disordered, and you're a product of your society. Your mind is broken. And don't think this has happened to you by accident. Your inability to sort and to order things uh, is a product of a design, a design of the government media complex to bring you down to the lowest common denominator of thought. And I want to go to a bigger political issue here because there is a relationship to a much uh, larger political story going on here. I have told you in, in repeatedly on this program, the Savage Nation, that one of the first things the communists do after a revolution in any country, if you study them, is they pull down the statues of the heroes of the nation. They wreck them. They destroy them. They wreck all vestiges of the civilization 
that they have just taken over. And I am telling you that the elevation of this ordinary singer to this level is part and parcel of the same mentality. First, they break down the real heroes, some of whom I just mentioned, most of whom I didn't mention at all. They've eliminated them from the public mind. And then they erect uh, statues or mind images of their own heroes who make no sense to people with a sense of history and people with a reasonable education and intelligence. And that is why you people listening to this show today are shocked to see what's going on in your country. When you hear that your president says that he grew up listening to Michael Jackson, uh, not to Chopin, not to Bach, not to Beethoven, he didn't mention one other classical musician, but Michael Jackson, and he said he has Michael Jackson's music in his iPod, and you see this president on training wheels pedaling all over the world in his mental tricycle, saying, look at me, I'm great, I can save the world. You recognize the trouble you are in. That is my opinion. It is only opinion. It is one man's opinion. Take it or leave it. It's the Savage Nation, 1-800-449-8255. If you want to talk about dying foxes, we can do that. If you love the memorial, I suggest you turn the show off because you're not going to hear a word of it on the Savage Nation. You could turn on one of the droolers uh, for the next few weeks. I suspect he will be lying in state in the National Rotunda shortly, uh, elevated perhaps to a level unseen in the history of the country, all part and parcel, not only of, in the simplistic terms, the dumbing down of America, it's the elevation for the dumb of America of people who are relatively obscure in the schemata of the world in plain English. 1-800-449-8255 is the phone number. MichaelSavage.com is my website. Let's hear from the callers on the Savage Nation. Chicago, Patrick, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Yeah, Michael, you're so right. It's just sickening. Dumb down the country. You know, it's like Michael Jackson is the opium for the masses. Isn't that what the communists always did? Give them something stupid like this to focus on. Not that we just gave away a third of our our, our missile system to the Russians for That's nothing. Right. Don't don't talk about the fact that... No, don't talk a- about the fact that Hillary Clinton and Obama are now at the, on the same side as Fidel Castro and Chavez and the Sandinistas in the Honduras situation. Make them focus on a man with a white glove. Give him Michael Jackson. Give him this clown. And it's the same thing. You know, you said it a couple of weeks ago. Turn your baseball cap around and go watch baseball. That's right. Michael what... Jackson is for the crowd that wears their hats on backwards or really maybe sideways. Not for me, thank you. Savage.